Roman beating many people in history have experienced like Jesus Roman flogging but this beating God beating like this not a single person in all of history has experienced Jesus was beaten why so that you don't have to be beaten <laughs>
the crushing of Jesus brought pleasure it says very hard to hear but that's what it says some people say you know when they hear stuff like this they say how can a good God take pleasure from crushing his own son beating his own son striking and smiting his own son you know a lot of this objection is going around these days in our city they're saying we should not teach saying God is the one that put the sin and the sickness and the punishment upon Jesus have you heard this you know sometimes they say this right they say God has no wrath we heard this kind of teaching right God does not show any wrath God did not pour out his wrath on his son on the cross they say we should not teach like that saying he poured out his wrath on the son on the cross because we're making him look like a bad God right a very evil person what kind of a father would put wrath on his own son you know so they, they say you should not teach like that but I disagree you know I agree people who misunderstand that can get a misunderstanding of God you know can get a wrong impression but what do you do with the truth Isaiah 53 very clearly says stricken smitten by God it was the will of the Lord it pleased the Lord to crush him what do you do with that you just ignore it no the truth must be told as the truth but the problem with these people is they don't view the whole picture you know the way they come and object is Oh, how can a good God punish his own son like this and beat him? And the way they say is as though from 2,000 years ago till today, God is beating Jesus and punishing him, pouring out his wrath. And as though Jesus is still on the cross or still in the grave, like that they object, you know. But the whole picture is what? Today, Jesus is not on the cross. He's not being beaten by the Romans or by God. He's not in the grave. He rose again from the grave. He was exalted to the right hand as a reward for his great work over here. Today, Jesus is not suffering. It was that one day, you see. So, and plus, let me also say this. God was not forcing Jesus to do this. How many of you know that? This was not God saying to his son, you must do this. No. Jesus did it voluntarily, right? Jesus said, I have the right to lay down my life and to take it. God has given me that right, Jesus said. If at any moment Jesus wanted to leave the cross, he could have done that. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he could have walked off and said, I can't do this. I can't go through with this. And God would not have forced him, you see. So the, the, this idea that God is a bad God because he punished Jesus is wrong. No, he punished him for that one day. Why? Why? Why did he punish him? That is the key. Here's where the good news of the gospel is. Why did he derive pleasure? Why did it please him to see his son being crushed? Is it saying that when his son was being crushed, when his son was, uh, you know, suffering so much, that gave God pleasure? No. What kind of a parent will get pleasure from the suffering of his son? Obviously not. It is not saying it in that sense. God is not deriving pleasure from the suffering of his son. Let me tell you how he's getting pleasure. When his son is suffering, when his son is being beaten by the Romans, when his son is being beaten by God, stricken by God, smitten by God, with all the sicknesses of the world, God is not just looking at that beating. He's looking at another picture. He's looking at the picture of you and I getting healed. Amen. he's not looking at this picture and getting pleasure because how can he get pleasure he cannot he's looking that through this today you are sitting there you can receive your healing <laughs> through this no matter what disease what sickness you have you can believe it went on Jesus thousand times more than the Romans beat him God scourged him and that will bring you when God was doing it he derived pleasure because he could see 2000 la years later they will still be preaching this like a church in our church like today people will be listening the word will go in people will believe people will receive their healing will live in health and strength his people you will be well healthy he was deriving pleasure from and Jesus did it voluntarily Jesus also knows the end result and today Jesus is what he is also deriving pleasure looking at you looking at what is happening in this church the preaching about the healing power of God you see so let us understand it correctly you see this is not some bad God just punishing his son don't that's a very short-sighted view God is deriving pleasure because 
you and i can get healed today my friend what's happening here the romans are beating him with a whip god is beating him with sickness and disease which beating is more tolerable i say to you the roman beating is more tolerable we think that is a very great beating they say you know two soldiers stood and they beat two soldiers so that you don't have to give a lot of time gap you know and one person won't get tired why have you ever thought why god allowed jesus to go through such horrible suffering there are many ways to die right if you just need to die to save somebody there's many ways you see you know today they give death sentence very easy ways lethal injection uh, you know electric chair everything is over in a few seconds i'm not saying it's easy i'm saying comparatively with the crucifixion right even uh, uh, death by hanging is, is is a few maybe even it's a few minutes you know uh, everything is just a few minutes but god chose a very long drawn torture for his own son why he was showing what is happening behind the scenes once again don't miss what's happening behind the scenes because that is the greater thing and that only will give you healing behind the scenes something worse than what you see on the outside is happening he's experiencing more torture <laughs> the sin of the world he's being beaten with the disease of the world he bore our sin means what not just like a suitcase was taken and put on him bearing carrying no he was beaten with it the stripes why does it say by his stripes we are healed the stripes the outward stripes are not just a sign of his outward beating they are a sign of his behind the scenes beating that stripes only can bring you healing the outward stripes if you just look at what is happening outward the roman sitting him and just think about that that will not bring you healing you need to see what is happening on the behind the scenes where jesus is punished for the sin of the whole world beat with the sickness of the whole world and that will bring you healing by his stripes we are healed see this is why thinking of pain like this only i think jesus was sweating drops of blood in the garden of gethsemane not thinking about the roman beating roman beating many people in history have experienced like jesus roman flogging but this beating god beating like this not a single person in all of history has experienced Jesus was beaten why so that you don't have to be beaten <laughs> that's the whole point you don't have to be beaten my friend like i said we have been beaten with all kinds of things you know sometimes it's a little pains a little sometimes it pains a lot but you don't have to be beaten why was he beaten so that you don't have to be beaten you need to open your mouth and resist that beating that sickness if you are tempted to think god is beating you no that's a lie the devil only is beating us god finished his beating on the cross that's it you don't get afraid looking at those verses you know striking smiting and all no 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 those verses are there to teach you about what happened in isaiah 53 look at the verses like that view those verses like that if somebody comes and tries to scare you with those verses tell them well it's there so that you can understand what is happening in isaiah 53 all the beating went on jesus you remember last week we said all the diseases that went on egypt will not come to us this week we can say with confidence all the beating that jesus received we don't have to receive it will not everybody say will not it cannot the whole point is it should not you see because of that only he gave it to him it should not you know the final thing i want to say is when jesus was beaten he didn't open his mouth he didn't open his mouth so that we can open our mouth look in isaiah 53 verse 7 it says twice he didn't open his mouth he was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth again at the end of that verse like a sheep that before his shearers is silent he opened not his mouth he didn't open his mouth we thought about that jesus if he had opened his mouth today we can't get forgiveness we can't get healing we can't get nothing you remember when he opened his mouth a little bit in the garden of gethsemane they came to arrest him all the roman soldiers in a big gang battalion you know and they came and they came looking for jesus and they were asking people you know we are looking for jesus of nazareth we are looking for jesus and they come right to jesus and they ask him the same question we are looking for jesus of nazareth and jesus looks at them and says i am just two words right i 
am. You know what happened when he said two words? The entire battalion fell backwards. Roman soldiers I'm talking about. Two words, he opened his mouth and he spoke. They fell backwards. In another place, Jesus gives an idea of what will happen if he opens his mouth. He says, do you think that I cannot call to my father right now and he will not send me 12 legions of angels and deliver me from these Romans? Jesus tells Peter, I think, that. Jesus could have easily walked away from the cross by opening his mouth. Easily walked away from that beating. All the Romans and everybody would have been wiped out in one word, you see, if he had wanted to. But he didn't open his mouth like a sheep without, that can't say anything. He kept his mouth shut. Why? For you and for so that when you are faced with disease and sickness and all kinds of attacks by the devil, you can open your mouth and say, you don't belong in my body, you get out. You can say that. There's a wonderful case of this happening in Acts chapter 22, you know. True story, Acts chapter 22, Paul is in the city of Jerusalem. He came, he's returning from a big success in ministry and he's received very well in Jerusalem. The story, the background is found in Acts 21. Um, and, uh, you know, first uh, he gets a good welcome in Jerusalem, but then after, after a while the Jews start hating him and they want to kill him. You know, they just hate him because, because of this one man, Paul, a lot of uh, uh, Jews have become Christians. So they put a plan and they go and cause a riot you know, they, they, they uh, provoke, instigate a big group of Jewish people to kill Paul right in the middle of the temple, I think. Temple or right outside the temple. And so they go and they gather around Paul and they start beating him. This is found in Acts 21. Okay, I'm just quickly telling you. They start beating him and um, this, is, this goes to such a scale that the whole city is in a riot. The city of Jerusalem is in a riot. The Roman soldiers hear about this and they shut the city gates and they say, nobody goes in or out. We need to find out what is happening. And the Roman commander goes there with his centurion, with his soldiers, and he goes and sees them beating Paul. And as soon as the Jews see uh, the Roman soldiers, they back away from Paul. You know, they, they, they're scared now. And so the Roman commander comes and we are told in Acts 21 that the soldiers carry Paul, put him like this and carry, them, carry him out of there. And Paul says to the commander, listen, I'm a Jew. These people are beating me. They're upset with me. They are also Jews. This is a problem between amongst ourselves. Let me just speak to them. Just give me a chance to speak. And so the commander says, okay, fine. Speak to them. You want to speak to them? Speak to them. I think there are thousands of people because the whole city is in a riot where so and Paul speaks to them and we find a speech in Acts 22, okay? You can read it later in your house. You read it and Acts, Paul is speaking to them. They are silent for a while, but after a while they start shouting again. Get, uh, get rid of this fellow. They start shouting, kill him, kill him. You know, you can read it. Like how they shouted for Jesus, crucify him. They're shouting for Paul, kill him. Do, get away, you know, get rid of this fellow. And the commander looks at all these thousands of people shouting like this. And he says, we got to do something about this. Acts 22, we're picking up the story from there. Acts 22, verse 24. The tribune or the commander ordered him to be brought into the barracks, saying that he should be examined by flogging to find out why they were shouting against him like this. He's saying, okay, why are so many people shouting against you? Let, let's examine you. Examine you by flogging. Okay, verse 25. But when they had stretched him out for the whips, Paul said to the centurion, <laughs> they tied him up, they stretched him out to be whipped. Okay, Paul, as they're about to start whipping him, Paul opens his mouth. <laughs> what does he do? So long he's been keeping quiet, you know, he's been saying other things. But now look what he says, verse 25. Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, Is it lawful for you to flog a man who is a Roman citizen and uncondemned? He says, let me ask you a question before you give, him, give me your first beating. I am a Roman citizen. <laughs> by law, are you allowed to beat me without me being condemned in court? The you know, in those days, Roman citizenship was the highest, had the highest status and honor and rights and privileges attached to it, you know. Today, sometimes people go abroad to other countries and they get citizenship, right? And we think that's a big thing, right? But that is nothing compared to what Roman citizenship 
how it was valued in those days in those days if you were a roman citizen you were somebody you were great if you are not a roman citizen you were a nobody you know if you're not a roman citizen you were probably a slave okay or if you're not a slave you might be a free man but you're a citizen of some other land and they the romans didn't care whether you were slave or citizen of some other land they'll treat you sometimes equally they won't give you m- much rights and privileges but for the roman citizens they'll give a lot of rights for example one right of the romans you can read this in history one right of the roman citizen is he cannot be flogged without being condemned in court in most cases they say their the roman citizens were not flogged they were given some other type of punishment another right that the roman citizen had is he ca- uh, if suppose a roman citizen was sentenced to death that sentence could be turned into a life sentence or an exile sentence another something very interesting i'll tell you a roman citizen could never be crucified never no matter what he does you cannot put a roman citizen on the cross this is the reason paul when he died as a martyr for christ he was beheaded you know but peter when he died he was put on the cross okay because paul was a roman citizen paul so long he has not shown revealed this but now when they're about to beat him he reveals who he is <laughs> so long he was showing himself as a jew now he says listen i'm a roman before you give me your first whip think about that and the 26 when the centurion heard this he went to the tribune and said to him what are you about to do for this man is a roman citizen he went to the commander tribune's commander he said what are you about to do man this guy is a roman citizen and the commander can't believe it in verse 27 the commander came and said to paul tell me are you a roman citizen and he said yes the commander can't believe it you see he's saying He's going to Paul and he himself is asking, are you really Roman? And he says, yes. Verse 28, the tribune answered, I bought the citizenship for a large sum. Paul said, but I am a citizen by birth. <laughs> the commander is looking at him saying, listen, you fellow, you're saying you're a Roman citizen. I was not even born a citizen. I had to pay a large sum of money to get the citizenship. Paul looked at him and said, I was born a citizen. I was born citizen and after the commander hears this verse 29 so those who were about to examine him withdrew from him immediately and the tribune also was afraid for he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen and that he had bound him they immediately let Paul go free and the commander was afraid why just because he tied him up you can't even tie up a Roman citizen who's uncondemned you see what am I trying to say Paul opened his mouth <laughs> if he had not opened his mouth what would have been the result? You would have gotten flogged, you see. Some people say Jesus did not open his mouth on the cross. So brother, I also don't open my mouth for suffering, you know. I bear everything. Jesus bore everything. I also bear everything. No, he bore everything and did not open his mouth so that we don't have to bear and we should open our mouth and reject sickness, you see. Look at it, Paul says, I'm a Roman by birth. We may not be Roman citizens, but we are citizens of heaven. And that is far greater than Roman citizenship. If Roman citizenship had so many rights and privileges, I tell you, we have more than that, my friend. Paul says, I am a citizen by birth. We are also born into the family of God. We are born citizens. Are you not? You are born citizens into the family of God. You are a child of the living God. You have rights and privileges as a citizen of the heavenly kingdom, the kingdom of God. And when something against you comes, a sickness or a disease, what does God expect us to do? Open your mouth. Reject it. Rebuke it. Don't give room for it. With all your might and energy, reject it. And it will go. Just open your mouth and speak your rights and privileges. Say, I'm a citizen. (laughs) Jesus purchased healing for me. You don't have any right in my body. Get out. How many of you are going to open your mouth and take healing for yourself? Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so good. Nothing to fear, cause I'm here in your presence. Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so, so good. 